Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nelson. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. And today's episode is a pretty important episode for us here at In-Depth Outdoors for a number of reasons. Today's show will be our final show for season 10. And the second reason today's show is important, we've been around for 10 years now. Nobody here at In-Depth Outdoors ever thought we'd make it that long. And we feel very fortunate to have had the chance to run around the upper Midwest and Canada and share a lot of great bites with you now for over 10 years. And trust me, there will be a season 11. So with that said, let's get to today's show. I'll be fishing with Mike Anselmo and we're in northern Wisconsin. We're launching just north of Ashland where we're going to be fishing on Shawamigan Bay. And what brings us here today is this area has a reputation for producing some of the largest smallmouth you're going to find anywhere in the upper Midwest. So I've always wanted to hit this fishery. The conditions have lined up just right this year to get on what I hope is going to be a fantastic bite. It should be a great show to end our 10th season here on In-Depth Outdoors. So stick around. It's me and Mike Anselmo on Shawamigan Bay today on In-Depth Outdoors. You know what I like best about this time of year? What's that? When you ask me to go fishing, it means we're going bass fishing. I know. And that's a good thing. It doesn't last long though. <laughs> it's an anomaly. Here. So it's been a few years since I've been here. I think I'll play it safe. We'll go out and around Oak Point a little bit. <laughs> I think that's a, uh, that's a good idea. You have limited time here. I have almost none, but I've heard good things. Yeah, I'm all about taking a big swing once in a while. All right, here we go. And the bottom just, un you got your channel, you know, then it just undulates. Yep. Six foot, eight foot, six foot, eight foot. The further back we get, the warmer that water is going to be. It should, yeah. We're going to start way in and come out or are we going to start out here and let's, just kind of putz our way in? Let's start out here and maybe we'll get lucky and never have to actually get up deep into the slough. And um, I'll start uh, throwing a jerk bait if you want to start throwing a uh, swim bait, paddle tail. I'll, I'll throw a pulsar. All right. Well, this is as good as here as we're going to get. Shawamigan bass number one. Yeah, that took, uh, I don't even have my fluorocarbon leader tied on yet. <laughs> Not a giant holst. Peanut. The cast number four, fish number one. This fish blowing up. I can see one every few minutes. There he is. Donk, just another peanut again. Not a big fish. Yeah, if there's a, a stick bait that just, I love to fish for pike and walleye and small moth, it's that flat wrap. Just love it. Everybody has their favorite. Yep. I think what I like about it is it's just so versatile. That one's got a big, big mouth, big head, but he's not a big fish. See you later, fish. Thanks for playing. My guess is as these water temperatures pick up, these bass will only get more active. And what we're fishing here is 
There's just not a lot of shallow spawning water in Schwamigan Bay. You take a look at the map and you start looking around for any extensive areas of shallow water where these bass will come up and spawn and you don't see right away compared to the total acreage of the bay itself. There's just not a lot of shallow water. So it gets pretty easy to figure out where these bass are gonna be. So we're up here in the shallows where these bass are gonna spawn and uh, the water's warmer up here. Got some nice little water clarity to the, uh, the water right now. It's not super clear. Trust me, you get out away from the shallows, you get out in the main portion of the bay, the water can be just crystal clear. I mean, there's areas of the bay here where it's just as common to catch a steelhead or a brown trout as it is to catch a smallmouth bass. So uh, this is a real nice combination. The darker, kind of stained, dirty water warms up quicker. You get these bass up here on these flats cruising. Right now we're catching primarily males. We've been here about 20 minutes. Absolutely no shortage of fish. And of course the trick is, can we find those giant females that this bay is known for? Compromising, like the fishermen who swear by it. The WX2060 and the MX2040 from Skeeter Boats, loaded with a long list of standard features anglers want at an unbeatable price, including a Yamaha VMAX SHO250 horsepower outboard, Yamaha T9.9 .9 kicker with remote controls, Lowrance HDS12 Gen 3 touch at the dash, and a Minn Kota 112 Ultera on the bow. The WX2060 priced at 61495 The new MX2040 priced at 60495 More comfort, more standard features. When you move up to a WX2060 or MX2040, you get more of everything. Authentic Series Soft Baits from Beef Fish and Tackle are just what the doctor ordered if you want to scratch your big fish itch. Available in two body styles, the Moxie Auger Tail and the Pulsar Paddle Tail offer a perfected blend of field tested color patterns and hyperactive designs that come to life in the water. To produce unparalleled fish catching movement and vibration, other soft baits just can't match. Authentex Plastics, your prescription strength cure for slow fishing, only from Beef Fish and Tackle. I was feeling Mike. Smacked it pretty good. A little better fish? Yeah, nice fish. If I didn't know better, I'd say you got a carp. You're fighting, man. It's a nice fish. There we go. <laughs> Noisely down. Well, definitely my biggest smallmouth of the year. Yeah. Let's catch a whole bunch more that size and bigger. Well, I think that is a good representation of a nice fish from Shawamigan Bay. Absolutely it is. Thick, deep, and he gave you a tussle. He did. All right, nice fish. I'm hoping that over the course of today that I get to do that about 25 more times. I think I kind of have a thing for this shadow wrap shad. I haven't seen you throw anything else when it comes to jerk bait. Well, you know, when we were fishing together a couple weeks ago, I had that I was bouncing back and forth between this and that storm twitch stick. And uh, I, I, I haven't even had a chance to experiment with anything else yet today because we've been here for all of what, a half hour, 45 minutes? It's been an okay start. We caught fish on plastic. We caught fish on jerk baits. That was the first good fish we caught today. So um, there's fish. I'm pretty good at paying attention. If I do that one or two more times, and they're big fish compared to uh, what we're getting on plastics right away, I think uh, jerk baits could be the key. We'll see. Oh, look at me bringing the team average down. I gotta stop swinging at the slider on the outside part of the plate. Whew. Decent fish. What do you think, James? It's not a crappie. 
a little guy. What I like about him is I had that swim jig up over the top of that little shallow bar up there, yep. and you come charging right over the top of it. <laughs> you were determined, I like that. Oh! You got him? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. That fish just pounded on it. Top rope shoulder slam. Come on, don't be that bass. I'm here, fish. This one has tasted thumb before, Mike. I believe it. Well, this one might not have been treated all that well the first time around. Sorry about that. Not everybody's that mean. <laughs> all right, see you later. That fish just clubbed it, though. <laughs> I mean, angry. There he is. Got him, James? I am firmly planted into this one. <laughs> Well, I'm no dummy. I'm going to cast right behind you. <laughs> All righty. We're at that point in our day where uh, we've caught so many fish, your fishing buddy doesn't even ask if you want the net anymore. It's just kind of like, eh, whatever. <laughs> oh. Deal with it yourself. <laughs> hey, man, you're on your own. <laughs> I'm on my own. <laughs> I'm hey, busy back here. He's not that big anyway. Two and a quarter. Two and a half pounds, maybe. Chunky girl, probably. Chunky guy, maybe. Back it goes. Nothing's changed. Mike is kind of the jerkbait guy, and I've just been throwing that pulsar, that paddle tail from Bee Fish and Tackle. And uh, my presentation is just kind of a slow, steady retrieve. And of course, Mike is fishing the jerkbait with that, those hard jerks and that pause, and both are working equally well. Shadow wrap shad's a jerkbait with a secret move. When you pause, the lure slowly rises. I tell you, man, it makes fish come unglued. Authentic Series Soft Baits from Bee Fish and Tackle are just what the doctor ordered if you want to scratch your big fish itch. Available in two body styles, the Moxie Auger Tail and the Pulsar Paddle Tail offer a perfected blend of field-tested color patterns and hyperactive designs that come to life in the water. To produce unparalleled fish catching movement and vibration, other soft baits just can't match. Authentex Plastics, your prescription strength cure for slow fishing, only from Bee Fish and Tackle. I've got this oyster shell paddle tail, this pulsar, which is great for visibility in the water when, uh, you know, early and late in the day. But I think I'm gonna go to a real natural color. I'm gonna go to something called a pro blue. It's not really blue, it's just a real natural minnow looking color. Same bait, uh, it's a pulsar. And uh, it is a very, very natural looking color to it. S some smoke to it, a little bit of a blue tint to definitely be more natural. We'll see if I can't get back on the big fish gravy train a little bit. Oh, yep, they'll eat the more natural pattern too. I don't <laughs> know if it's going to be any bigger, but it's like every three, four casts. Now. Oh, whoa, you got, whoa. there's a big one with it. Is it? Yeah. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I do. I thought he was going to say, I've got the big one hooked up. No, you got a big <laughs> one with it. That's uh, not a bad fish. That's not a bad fish. But there was a donk with it, huh? Woof. Woo, come here, you. Well, this one, oh, if you ended up sticking the beast because I, I showed you where he lived, I'm not going to be happy. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I didn't get the beast. I got, I, 
I've got a carbon copy of, of that same one you have, I think. This is just so much fun. That fish is not very big. He's just... He's cantankerous. Yeah, the one that was with your fish? Yeah. Oof, that was a big one. You need to stop saying that. I'll take these all day. We have had an awesome day already. Oh! These fish are running the drag before I get a chance to swing on the, with the rod tip. Not a, not a giant fish by any means. I got one too. Okay, if yours is bigger, I gotta figure something out. Well, this one isn't small. I can tell you that one already. It's the little things make a huge difference. I don't know what it is. You're gonna, get, yeah, you're getting more fish clearly with that plastic right now, but these fish on this hair jig are all about quality. Oof, nice fish. Is it? <laughs> yeah. They look nice in the water. <clears throat> nice fish. Yes, it is. Beautiful. Twice the size of mine. <laughs> well, and I told you I kind of pulled that switcheroo. So, I mean, early morning, late afternoon, you know, most of the, uh, you know, the spring conditions like this, basically the jerk bait is the ultimate recipe for success, right? But um, when things get tough, when it's midday like this, that marabou hair jig, there is not a bait on the planet, I swear up and down, that is, uh, simpler to use that fish just react to and eat when conditions get tough so um, the wind is kind of blowing off the lake here a little bit lake superior is giving us uh, i kind of wish i had a little a uh, little more for clothes on but um, when things get tough things get cold that little bitty bait right there i swear is just magic for smallmouth it looks like every little thing that crawls or swims in the water i i don't know what they think it is but all i know is they eat it and i'm okay with it I'm okay with uh, Mike out fishing me once in a while, but if that streak continues, I will make the switch. There's one. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a little green. It didn't want to come in right away. I wouldn't want to taste your thumb either. <clears throat> if I'm not at work tomorrow, it's because I moved to Ashland. <laughs> I know your boss, he's not going to put up with that. <laughs> <laughs> nice fish. They're really, they got great color. They do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is there any chance you have another one of those things? Oh yeah. This one is all kinds of upset. <laughs> <laughs> he knows nothing good's about to happen. Feels like a good fish. I just can't do hardly anything with it. Do I dare get the net? <sighs> nice fish. That's a four pounder plus. Ooh. <laughs> what do you think of that one? That is a beautiful fish, Mike. <laughs> I may have underestimated what I was dealing with there. That is a nice fish. That one is going to make lots of babies. Oh, that's a big one. We're busy. Yes, we are. <laughs> We've got our hands full, man. This is deli counter, take a number kind of stuff. <laughs> so here's what just happened with that last fish of Mike's. Uh, that was the uh, straw that broke this camel's back. I was holding out. Um, I'm kind of wired to where I never like to fish the same lure as the other guy or guys in the boat because I just like to keep the you know different lures in the water so you can stay on top of the bite better. But after you see kind of a butt kicking like that over an extended period of time, it's time to switch. So uh, I've switched over to that same VMC marabou jig we'll call them a hair jig but you know that's marabou you just don't see these very often it's a very specialized bait that you know you won't find them in a lot of places this one's made by vmc it's got a little bit of you know flash of blue tied into that and there's just certain times of the year where a bait like this just is just absolutely dynamite under the, this type of situation where the water's cold uh, you've got the fish up in shallow water they're adult fish. They're not dumb. They didn't get big by just chomping at anything that swims by them. And you get midday like this where they're just not hitting those jerk baits anymore. They're not hitting the big swim baits. This right here, it's just one eighth ounce of gold uh, when it comes to putting big bronze back in the boat.
Authentic Series Soft Baits from Beef Fish and Tackle are just what the doctor ordered if you want to scratch your big fish itch. Available in two body styles, the Moxie Auger Tail and the Pulsar Paddle Tail offer a perfected blend of field-tested color patterns and hyperactive designs that come to life in the water. To produce unparalleled fish catching movement and vibration, other soft baits just can't match. Authentex Plastics, your prescription strength cure for slow fishing, only from Bee Fish and Tackle. Everything you'd expect from a premium quality fish house and so much more. Glacier combines superior craftsmanship and premium quality materials to produce a comfortable and enjoyable mobile base camp for your next outdoor adventure. Available in a variety of models, a Glacier Ice House offers more standard features, more usable space, and a better fit and finish than the competition. Visit our website at GlacierIceHouse.com to find a dealer near you and see why a Glacier Fish House is the ultimate way to play. Shallow wrap shad's a jerk bait with a secret move. When you pause, the lure slowly rises. I tell you, man, it makes fish come unglued. Fishing the hair jig. Oh! <laughs> that one looks like a good one. It feels great. Jump! Do it! I haven't had one jump yet today. Oh! I kind of have my drag uh, a little tight yet from fishing those plastics. You yep. know, cast them so far. I wanted to get real good hook sets. This is a good fish. Mike, you're my hero. Hair jig Mike. <laughs> Look at that. That is a dandy. That is a dandy. Wow. Look at this. Ah, that is a brute of a smallmouth. Oh, man. <laughs> I like this place. I think I might consider coming back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Little hair jig, just a little tough to feathers. Simple, simple stuff. But you know, we've caught nice fish on everything we've done today. Yeah. It just changed throughout the day. Bunk. Look at that. And that hair jig, you know, every time you catch a big one, they seem to pull a couple tufts off and they did, the jig just fishes better and better. <laughs> All right, let that fish go. That's a lot of smallmouth right there. Back you go, Bass. Thanks for playing. Off she goes. One more like that, Mike. We're closing this thing out. You know what? I'm good with that. We caught a lot of fish today. Oh, man. It's been lucky, guys. I'm feeling it. It's going to happen. Yeah. There it is. That nice deep water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, a good pair of polarized glasses right now is worth more than any side imaging, down imaging, whatever. Because you can just see those steep breaks and you get to call your shots. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's something too. That's that's like the third time or fourth time that yep. like it's... you should be right there. Boink. <laughs> angry. Just angry enough to make this difficult on me. That's a dandy. Isn't it? That fish, look at that hair jig. When they want it, it's gone. <laughs> he sucked it all the way back. I just can't for the life of me get tired of this. Yep. But I think you're right. I think we're just about done. Hair jig power right there, man. You know what else is just about done? My hair jig. Yeah. I'm serious though. The, I know. It's there's... like you, you catch six, eight fish and they just seem to get better. I don't know. <laughs> well, 
Un until there's just nothing left. Right. At some point, you're just fishing a piece oh. of lead. This feels good. Big head shakes, heavy fish. You know what? I think it's safe to say that Shawamagon Bay is alive and well. <laughs> I haven't had smallmouth fishing like this in a long, long time. And I think what we're going to do here is we're going to call to a close a great day of fishing that is also the end of our season here at In Depth Outdoors. This is the end of season 10, and I can tell you nobody thought that they would get to uh, see 10 years of doing this. I feel very, very fortunate to have had the chance. And of course, nobody's promised a tomorrow, but the Lord willing and the river don't rise, there will be a season 11. We'll be back in the fall. Wait till you see this fish. If you're gonna end on a small wall, this is the one to do it. Got him. <laughs> There's the way to end a great day on the water and put an end to our 10th season here at In-Depth Outdoors. And like I said, we, we will be back for season 11 in November. What a way to draw to a close a phenomenal day here on Schwamigan Bay. I'll let that fish go. All right. See you later. Oh, that water feels warm. See you later. Right. That was a fantastic fish. I couldn't have uh, hoped for a better way to cap off a, what has been a phenomenal 10th uh, season for us here at In-Depth Outdoors. And before we go, I just want to say thanks to all the guys that helped make this possible. You got Ben Larson, you got Pat McSherry, Alex Anderson, and Nick Cox, the production guys behind what we do here at In-Depth Outdoors. They make us look a lot better than we are, trust me. And to all the pro staff guys that have donated their time to come out and get on these great bites all across the upper Midwest and Canada, you know, I respect so much what they give to what we're able to accomplish here at In-Depth Outdoors. And I want to thank them for their time. I know it's hard to be away from friends and family and when they come out on the ice or in the boat with me, I enjoy their time and hope we get to spend a lot of time together again in the future. So for everyone that watches, uh, you've made what we do here at In-Depth Outdoors a dream for all of us. Uh, of course, when we started doing this 10 years ago, nobody expected we'd be able to enjoy the run that we have and we look forward to maybe another 10 years. So. From Mike and Salmo and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next year. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.